Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you about how you can go about estimating a market risk premium using a model called the dividend discount model. Now in order to talk meaningfully about this approach, I need to take you back to some of the stuff that you may have learned when you were taking your classes in uh, stock valuation. If you have a stock that is giving dividends and those dividends are expected to grow at a constant rate, then the worth or the price of that stock can be expressed as the dividend that is expected one year from now divided by the rate of return that equity holders are requiring from that stock minus the growth rate. What the dividend discount model is essentially saying is that if you have some expected dividend in one year from now, if you know the rate at which dividends are expected to grow, and if you know what is the rate of return that equity holders require on their equity investment, you can figure out the price. Now in the real world, while you may have some expected dividends, while you may also know a stock's expected growth rate in dividends, what you get to observe is the price of the stock itself in the stock market based on demand and supply forces. My point being that you don't get to observe the expected return directly, rather what you get to observe is the price that is implied by the rate of return that investors require. However, if we rearrange this equation then, we can determine what is the rate of return that is implied by the price. So if we rearrange this equation, this says that the rate of return that investors require is D1 over P0, which we also refer to as the stock's dividend yield. And then the other part of the return is this growth part, the growth rate in dividends. In fact, it can be shown that this is equal to capital gains. In other words, this is the rate at which we can expect the price of the stock to increase. Now you're saying, okay, well, I kind of get it for stocks. How does this relate to our discussion on expected market risk premium? Well, if we can do this for stocks, we can also do this for a broad portfolio or a well-diversified portfolio of risky assets as well. So something like the S&P 500, if we have a sense of what is the price of one share of the S&P 500, and if we also know or have some expectation around how much dividend we will get from the S&P 500 company, then we can get the dividend yield on the S&P 500. And if we also have an estimate of the rate at which we are expecting these dividends to grow, then we can sum these two numbers and form an expectation of what the return on S&P is going to be going forward. Notice this is D1. This is how much dividend we're expecting one year from now in relation to price. One year from now is not a certain thing. So we have some expectation around it. So we have some expected dividend yield. And similarly, growth going forward is also not a certain thing. So we have some forward looking number here. We have some forward looking number here. And this is giving us a sense of the expected return on the market or the S&P going forward. If we can do this, then what we're essentially getting is the rate of return that we're expecting on the market that is implied by the price that prevails today. So we refer to this as the implied return. And if we end up then subtracting the existing risk-free rate, either on long-term bonds or US Treasury bills, then what we will get is what is referred to as the implied market risk premium. What you really, really need to understand is that the dividend discount model approach to estimating market risk premiums is a forward-looking approach. I'm emphasizing this because this is in contrast to the other approach to estimating market risk premium, which is using historical data. The assumption there is that whatever has happened in the past, on average, is also what's going to happen in the future. In situations where we don't expect the future to look much like the past, this can give us a truer or a better measure of the expected return on the market and therefore the risk premium. So let's suppose we're in a situation where people have invested too much in stocks. They're taking on a lot of risk. That might cause the price of the S&P to be higher than it usually is or has been in the past in relation to the dividends that the stocks are offering. As a result, the expected dividend yield might be lower. So the expected return on the market is expected to be low. And as a result, 
the expected market risk premium might be low. So that is the benefit of this approach, that this is more forward-looking and more grounded in the fundamentals as they prevail today. Now, as you can see, there are really two main things that are required over here. One is an estimate of the expected dividend yield on the market portfolio. And the second is the expected growth rate in dividends. Actually, we can rewrite this equation as D0 into 1 plus G divided by P0, where D0 is the dividend that the S&P just gave out most recently. The price is the price that prevails today. So both these are at time period zero, which means that we can observe them today. And to the extent that dividends are expected to grow at a constant rate, then next year dividend, we can form an expectation of it just as D0 into 1 plus G. And then on top of that, you have this growth part right here. So really, if you think about it, what you really need is an estimate of the growth rate. And the good news here is that security analysts commonly provide forecasts of this number, of this future growth rate. So for instance, uh, Value Line does a survey called the Investment Survey, which uh, provides the five-year growth rate and dividends for Value Line's Industrial Composite Index, which is basically a well-diversified portfolio of risky assets. Now you may need a subscription for that, but fortunately, there is another very credible source of information, which is this uh, website that is maintained by Professor Aswat Damodaran from New York University. It shows calculations on historical implied equity risk premiums. The data goes all the way from 1960 to most recently January 2024. Over here, you will see other inputs such as dividend yields and earnings yields. And then this information is used to calculate the implied premium based on the dividend discount model. Now, while the dividend discount model is more grounded in uh, fundamentals and is forward looking in order to come up with a reliable estimate of the rate of return that one can expect from the S&P or a well diversified portfolio, you need to come up with a good or reliable estimate of growth rate. And guess what? Different people can come up with very different reasons for very different estimates, which is why historically academics and even analysts have tended to prefer the historical approach to estimating market risk premium because historical data is the same for everyone. So there you have it, quick overview of the dividend discount model approach to estimating market risk premiums. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.